Good morning, 7.06 a.m. to 9.2018. Oh, this is from my group, Commune Davis City, Iowa. And no, I do not own the actual Commune, but I do somewhat, in a sort of way, own this group that I made. Okay? Um... Uh, this is uh, the main photo, the profile photo, I guess you might say, uh, because my stepdaughter from that commune accused her dad falsely of 2,100 rapes over the course of two years that she did not report. And her mother was a stickler that way. And I believe her grandparents were too, and aunts. That if she had mentioned, even the mere drop of a mention, when she was there visiting, or through their correspondence or phone calls, they would have lowered the boom on John Myers. Do you, do you know what I mean? Lower the boom, meaning sent the cop sirens wailing. If she had even so much as mentioned that he touched her. Okay? And I didn't mention it in yesterday's screencast. And after I played it through again, I realized, oh, I didn't mention this, I didn't mention that, because I've got things kind of lumped up in the in the way I have had to deal with it or think it through or whatever you want to call it. Oh, I forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> oh, man, it is old age. Uh, maybe I can come back to it. Let me pause a second. Okay, I remembered. Uh, she told them that I was off at friends visiting all the time when the so-called rapes occurred. All right? I wasn't. I wanted them so badly to pick up my... At the time, we didn't have internet my phone book it was an opera book with the blanks to fill in alphabetically to put contacts in old-fashioned contact list okay personal phone book but they didn't and it sat right there on the coffee table see we had a, a formal front room just off of the dining room and then we also had a family room you know so would, a person wouldn't walk in the house and see somebody stretched out on the couch or you know eating a big bowl of popcorn or something but that's how I liked it okay but I wasn't at these friends I was totally dedicated to my home I didn't really know anyone except for the 12-step groups and there weren't a lot of females well, when I first joined in like 80, I was the only female in that whole group. So I became their secretary treasurer. And then I took other positions in the group too, all of which were non-paying jobs. But, you know, it was something to do for others. Because you're better off if you can get out of yourself and do things for other people every once in a while. You know, so you're not totally self-serving. You do something for others. All right. I'm not too kicked up on this coffee this morning. I just got a new coffee pot. And I used this Dunkin' Donuts for K-Cups, but I opened three of them. It's only a three-cup pot. It came in this little multi-kitchen set, like three-in-one with a griddle and the toaster oven and you know 
one of those. And it's just, eh, I don't really like it, but uh, I'm going to drink it and suffer through it. Okay? I left all that behind, basically. Well, I left it all behind fully. The only person I had from my high school days, and I didn't even have her all the time. I have, I mean, hang around was my cousin, my second cousin, who's dead now. She came over one time when we lived in the house that was on North Engineer that my mother had bought us and fixed up, help, you know, hang paper and this and that. She loved to do that kind of stuff. Uh, the one, the first son died in and Brad was born during the time we lived there that CPS decided to make my mother charge us rent after we thought we were going to get to climb out of the hole of being, you know, in poverty. She came over there one time and I don't know where I'd gone. We did have a car at that time. We had a Sapero which were limited editions of that year that they made them. And, or Sapporo, Sapporo, however it's pronounced. Little five-speed. And, um, I had gone to the store or something real quick. Meanwhile, she showed up, and John was there. And when I walked in, they were standing there in the front room just talking, waiting for me. So she only stayed maybe five minutes after that. And she was one of my closest buddies during school, you know. And we met in second grade. And she was one of the others that got stuck in the closets and spent the day in the dark, sensory deprivation. And it wasn't um, an actual sensory deprivation closet because they do have those. It was a closet, cloakroom closet they had in the elementary school at Washington Elementary in Sedalia, Missouri. Um, it was the old-fashioned kind. There were seven or eight doors with these little brass doorknobs. The top part of the door, of each door, was chalkboard, and then the rest of the below part was wooden. And if you turn the very first one, the whole row would open. They had one, these are hard to explain, one connection at the top and one connection at the bottom. And they would turn, just, they'd all turn open at once. Very difficult. If I could find a picture of them, and I haven't been able to do that, I don't know even what, to call them the type of door track door no that doesn't sum it up because that could be a sliding door I don't know I'll have to work on that but anyway she was the only friend that I had left over from my high school days and um, we didn't hang around that much she had she had her family and we'd see each other occasionally at maybe um, reunion it wasn't like we used to. Every morning we'd be on that phone. What are you going to wear? What are you going to wear? Some mornings, 15 or so calls. Back and forth, the two of us. Is it raining? What are you going to wear? I'm going to wear pants today. Oh, okay. What? Jeans? Okay, yeah, all right. No, is it dress day? No, it's too windy. <laughs> that kind of just girl chatter. And... I just wanted married, and I wanted my little life. I wanted my home, my little family. That was good enough for me. Why isn't that good enough for some people? You know, I didn't have a big Lottie doll social life. Woohoo! Lots in Sedalia do. I do know that. They have big whoop de doo social lives, and I guess they feel 
that they wouldn't be who they are if not for that, you know. I don't happen to feel that way. But I was treated as if she was right and I was wrong. So I hope they had, I hope they would have picked up that book to thumb through and say, look, she said you were at friends. So this whole total thing was barrel rolled against us. They didn't even pick up the book to thumb through. And of course, too, over the years, I didn't have some of the contacts in that book. So it would take a little label or even a sticky envelope edge, you know, the flap edge, and just cut the pasty part off and use it to cover over addresses and phone numbers I didn't contact anymore. I wish I didn't have this cold. Wow. But see, every single thing went her way. They left no wiggle room for me to interject, hey, excuse me, can you prove or disprove that I was out there somewhere running around? Because <laughs> I didn't even get that, people. I didn't even get that. They were totally aligned in bias against us. Okay. So then I popped over here this morning and I got this uh, search open for LDS female priests. Okay. Mormon women and priesthood. Five depressing new survey findings. All right. Well, in in our household, the Myers household, he at one time did have LDS priesthood. And I don't even know enough about this LDS priesthood thing to know how similar or how not similar it is to the Catholic Church, which I only know a smidgen about, because although I do have Catholic family, and my family has had Catholic acquaintances, like my mom's best friend was Catholic, you know, in her family. And cousins on my dad's side, including the cousin I was telling you about earlier that I had lost contact with, um, they were all Catholic, you know, but we weren't. So maybe they were viewing it like, well, you're what your family is, or you're with the majority of your family. Wrong. That is totally wrong. Okay? Not that there's something wrong with them. I don't know what could be wrong with them. I, I know there's things said about Catholics, and some people just don't want to go there, and that's fine. No need to start a holy war about it. Stay mellow if possible, right? But all that was assumed, just like it was assumed and this is another assumption, actually, because no one actually stated it. But see, we had been working on that sidewalk out front. And because we had two-thirds of that block was ours, uh, north of the alley to 2nd Street. We were taking that brick up, and John had placed a yellow caution tape similar if not identical to what the police use so maybe when they by the time they got there they're like oh somebody's been here to you know gather dna evidence or whatever because there's the tape so it could be that too so thanks for watching i'm out of time